Dear students, in this lecture we will talk about crystallography. Crystallography is the branch of science that deals with the arrangement and bonding of atoms within the crystalline solid and with the geometry of the structure of crystal lattice. Crystallography can be divided into asteroid crystallography. Asteroid crystallography is the experimental technique of determining the crystallography of the crystal using the diffraction of X-rays from crystal. Then there is another branch of crystallography which is optical crystallography. Optical crystallography deals with the study of crystal using polarized light. It is the branch of crystallography that deals with the optical properties of crystals. Then we have geometrical crystallography. Geometrical crystallography is the study of the symmetry of atom within the solid. As we noted, all crystalline materials have the specific arrangement of atoms and molecules within the crystalline solid. These have the specific pattern of atoms and molecules, that is they have the specific symmetry. We get the same crystal symmetry by applying the different symmetry transformation. Like we can either translate the atoms or molecules, we can reflect it or we can rotate it. Whatever we do, we get the same pattern of atoms or molecules within the crystalline solid. In order to understand the symmetry and symmetry transformation, we will take some symmetry pattern and then we will apply the different symmetry transformation on it. First of all, we will discuss the translation symmetry. In order to understand this symmetry transformation, we take symmetry pattern. This symmetry pattern is also called as motif. That is, this is the one set of motif. If we apply the translation symmetry or translation operation, we get the same set of motif at some distance from this motif. This translation operation, which is represented by T, this translation is a vector which has magnitude and direction. But no unique origin. So if we apply the same translation operation once again, we get another set of uh, set of motif. So we can apply the translation operation again and again. We get the different set of motif on left side and on right on the right side. We can get the inference set of motif. We can get in the same way. We can get the pattern of motif by applying the translation again and again. So we can say that if we take this set of motif as a rubber pattern, by picking the rubber, rubber stamp and putting it at equal distance again and again, we get pattern by unique origin we means that no matter where is this rubber stamp we can extend it up and down right and left by equal distance in space that is we can say that either we can take this motif either we can take this set of motif or this set of motif and by picking any set of motif and applying the translation operation, translation transformation by up and down on left or right, we can extend the pattern all over the space. That is, it has no unique origin. So we can say that 
operation that acts all over the space. So, an object or space possesses symmetry when there is operation or set of operation that are congruent to itself. Congruent to itself means that by applying the symmetry transformation, we get the same pattern again. We get the similar pattern. There is no difference. In order to understand the translation symmetry, let we have another set of motif like this one and we can extend it up to infinity from left to right and here you can see that there is some specific arrangement in this pattern that is this motif and this motif is same and this motif and this motif is the same so these motif are arranged in alternate order so there is some kind of symmetry so we can say that there is translation symmetry if we apply the translation symmetry operation from here to here we get the same pattern in the same way there is the translation from here to here so this set of motif possesses the translation symmetry let we have another set of motif like this one we can extend it up to left and right again you can see that there is some specific uh, arrangement like this motif and this motif is the same and this one and this one is same so again there is some kind of symmetry so we can say that there is the translation symmetry if you apply the symmetry translation symmetry operation from here to here we get the same pattern in the same way, if we apply the translation symmetry operation from here to here, again we get the same pattern of motif. So both these set of motif possesses the translation symmetry. There is another type of symmetry operation which is called as the rotational symmetry. In order to understand rotational symmetry, let we have the set of motifs like this one we have the smooch pattern we can extend it up to infinity on the left side and on the right side there is the dotted sign between the motifs and this dotted sign between two motifs about which if we rotate one motif to its neighbor and for this purpose if we take the whole chain and flip it through 180 degree and we will map it and it will map to itself that is we get the same pattern this dotted sign is represented by a alpha that is we can say that if we rotate this motif with respect to this motif through 180 degree we get the same same pattern that is we apply the two-fold rotational symmetry operation that is once we apply the rotational transformation rotational symmetry operation and flip it to 90 degree and then again we apply the rotational symmetry operation and we flip it through one and through through 90 degree again so and we get the same pattern so in order to get the same symmetry our same pattern we need to rotate it to 180 degree that is this is the this is two fold symmetry operation here a alpha where a is the location of axis of rotation that is here is the axis of rotation about which we rotate this is called as axis of rotation about which we rotate the motif and alpha is the angle of rotation here alpha is 180 degree that is we need to rotate this motif to 180 degree to, in order to get the same pattern so we have another set of uh, motifs like this one this one and this one so it has 
the translation symmetry as we have already discussed that there is a translation symmetry in this pattern along with translation it also possesses the rotational symmetry that is if we rotate this motif to this motif from here to here that is if we rotate it through 180 degree then we get the same pattern that is it will be concurrent to itself for this purpose we can take the whole chain of pattern and we can flip it to 180 degree then again we get the same pattern it will be it will map to itself so we can say that it is twofold operation we need to rotate the motif by 180 degree to get the same pattern again so alpha is 180 degree so here we apply the rotational symmetry operation two time that is we rotate it 90 one time we rotate it 90 degree and again we rotate it by 90 degree and then we get the same symmetry so that's why it is called as two fold symmetry operation reflection symmetry operation is another type of symmetry transformations to understand this transformation like we have another set of motif like this one this one we can extend this motif from left and right up to infinity here you can see that we have a line or axis of symmetry which is dividing the motif into two parts we can observe that here is the axis of symmetry or line in each motif if we flip the motif from left to right we get the same pattern that is pattern will be concurrent to itself in the same way we can flip the whole pattern from left to right then the symmetry of the pattern will remain same so we can say that along with the translation symmetry operation this set of motif or this symmetry pattern also possesses reflection symmetry that is both sides of this line are mirror image of each other so we can explain it like that we can flip the motif from left to right across this line and we also flip the whole pattern this is the type of reflection symmetry because we get the same type of motif upon reflection and this line is called as axis of symmetry left and right side of the motif are mirror image mirror image of each other and reflective symmetry that is we get the same pattern on both side of symmetry axis like we have another set of motif like this one this one this one and this one in the same way we extend the pattern on the left side and the right side on top and down here you can see that this pattern possesses the translation symmetry that is if we can uh, translate it from this motif to this motif from here to here we get the same pattern but when we talk about the reflection symmetry transformation we see here that this pattern do not possesses the reflective symmetry why it, it does not possesses the reflective symmetry because symmetry transformation act all over the space not only on single point let we have like pattern this one pattern here you can see that if we apply the reflective symmetry transformation or reflection symmetry transformation then transformation will not act on this line on this direction either it will go along this direction 
but so it's mean that symmetry transformation is not acting on all over the space so this is the basic rule of the symmetry transformation that it should act all over the space not only on a single point it should leave all the space around the pattern invariant so we can say that this pattern possesses the translation but no reflection symmetry reflection operation is not possible because it does not left the whole space invariant because if we perform the reflection operation it will change the direction of transformation here you can see that if we perform reflection transformation it's not acting along this line either it will go in this direction so it's not left the whole space invariant it's not acting all over the space it's not going to fulfill the basic rule of symmetry transformation as we know that symmetry transformation act all over the space not only on single point that is symmetry operation should left everything invariant in order to understand this statement let we have another motif we have the star with its five corner here you can see that there is the red symmetry line there are the different symmetry line this one this one and this one so across each line you can see that each line is dividing this motif into two parts that is both part are the both part across the symmetry line are the same both are mirror image of each other and so every line so across each every line you can see that both sides of this motif are the same there is no change upon the application of reflective symmetry operation everything remain invariant across the, across this symmetry line or across this motif then along with the along with this transformation or reflective transmetry symmetry operation we have rotational symmetry operation there are five rotations here you can see that upon each rotation the pattern will remain same everything around this motif will remain same there will be no change upon the application upon application of this transformation everything will remain unchanged or invariant so we can say that this star have mirror image symmetry and five fold rotational symmetry okay if we enclose this image in a box then what will happen okay if we enclose the whole image in a box then there will be only one symmetry operation that is there will be only reflective symmetry that is we have only one line which is dividing the motif into two parts there is no reflective symmetry there is no reflection symmetry operation because if we apply reflection symmetry it's not going to act all over the space it will not left everything inferior so there is only one symmetry operation that is reflective symmetry which lift the everything invariant or unchanged around this motif so we can say it is the basic rule of symmetry transformation that it should act all over the space not only on the single point now an other important thing is the symmetry element symmetry element is the locus of points that are left unmoved by symmetry operation in order to understand it let's we have the 
symmetry operation in two dimension. That is, here you can see that we have x-axis and y-axis here is the positive x-axis along this side there is the negative x-axis this is the positive y-axis and this one is the negative y-axis if we apply the translation symmetry operation in two dimension then we have uh, changed the coordinate x y into x plus a and y plus a that is, if we have the motive sitting over here in the xy plane and we move it by a distance a, then it will change the x coordinate to x plus a and to y coordinate to y plus a. If we apply the second translation, then it will change the x to x plus 2a and y to y plus to b that is again we have a motif here by applying another symmetry operation so by applying the translation operation by we get the motif at equal distance from one another so like we have if we apply the reflection symmetry operation in two dimension here you can see that here we have a motif which have the coordinate x and y and its mirror image if you have the, its coordinate minus x and y that is it's the motif which move that is it's the motif which move and we get the same motif upon reflection both are the mirror image of each other it's not it's the line of symmetry that is locus of point that left unmoved by symmetry operation that is symmetry element remain does not move it's the only pattern which move so we can say that by applying the reflection symmetry once it will change the sense of x coordinate only one coordinate that is x coordinate s y will change into minus x and y upon first reflection if we apply the reflection second time then upon second reflection minus x y will go to change into again it will change into x y so if we apply the rotation on two dimensional space then here you can see that if we have a motif in x y plane and if we, if we rotate it by 180 degree we get the same motif and here but it will change the sense of both coordinate now it's in the minus x minus y plane so we can say that upon first rotation x y will change into minus x minus y if we apply the second rotation then minus x minus y will change into x y so we can say that it's the locus of point symmetry element is the locus of point that left unmoved by symmetry operation that is the symmetry element are uh, which can be the axis of symmetry which it will remain it will it will left unmoved only the motif will move around this uh, uh, this point or this locus now we talk about the symmetry operation in one dimension in one dimension, only two transformations are possible. Number one, we can have only a translation transformation or symmetry operation. That is, we can we change the sense of no coordinate. That is, there will be no change in the coordinate in one dimension 
if we apply the translation symmetry operation. Secondly, we can apply reflection in one dimension. If we apply the reflection symmetry operation, we change the sense of one coordinate. That is only one coordinate is going to change that is is from plus to minus or from minus to plus upon reflection symmetry operation. Symmetry operation in three in three dimensions. So in three dimensions we can apply the translation, rotation, reflection and reflection or inversion symmetry operation. So four types of symmetry operations are possible in three dimensions and two types of symmetry operations are possible in one dimension and three types of symmetry operations are possible in two dimensions.